we move about 60 kilometers north to visit Clermont in the region of Picardy. At the asylum for mentally ill, the place she called the Penal Colony for Psychiatrists, Constance Pascal had plans to reform the institutional medicine. She was the first psychiatrist woman in France. Her huge contribution to psychiatry is largely forgotten. She prohibited corporal punishment and straitjackets for mentally ill. She ensured clean dormitories and she was interested in educating children with severe learning difficulties. Costanza Pascal was born on the 22nd of August 1877 in Pigest, in the province of Wallachia, Romania. Her father, Ayn Pascal, was a landowner. Her brother Tarajan was encouraged to pursue a military career, but Costanza was not allowed to continue her studies. After the death of her father in 1891, she obtained from her family the permission to pursue a professional qualification. In 1897, she moved to Paris to start her medical training with minimal financial support. In 1903, Costanza Pascal and Medellin Pelletier were the first two women to be accepted as asylum interns. During her internship, Pascal was at the Ville Edvard under Paul Serrier. Her 1905 dissertation, Femmes atypiques de la paralysie générale, supervised by Serrier, gained the highest mark, a bronze medal from the medical faculty and, in 1906, the prestigious Moreau de Tue Prize. The thesis was reported in the press as a feminine success. After gaining the French citizenship in 1907, Constance Pascal was eligible to take the examination for a permanent psychiatric post, and she passed in 1908. It was the first time for a woman. Pascal was assigned as junior doctor to the asylum of clermont de lois where she remained until 1920. In 1908, she published an article on Robert Schumann, contributing to the debate about his mental illness. Schumann suffered two distinct mental disorders, but his musical genius was the result of perfect mental functioning, affirming that his genius emerges not because of a mental disability, but in spite of it. Pascal opposed the Lombroso's theory of the mad genius. In 1911, she published an analytical summation of previously published research on the dementia precox from nosology and organic basis to social aspects. Pascal noted its effect especially on the young and traced the social and educational dimensions of the disease. By 1918, schizophrenia was adopted as the alternative diagnostic term for the disease. Pascal corresponded with Kreplin, who even offered her a collaboration with him. Her reform plans were stopped by the outbreak of World War I. Clermont was occupied by the Germans in 1914. Patients were not evacuated. In terrible conditions of food deprivation and hygiene, the asylum admitted also shell-shocked soldiers. In 1915, Constance Pascal met General Justin Mengin, commander of the 6th Army Brigade, who had been quartered at El Clermont. His wife was suffering mental health problems. By the end of the year, she discovered she was pregnant, and this posed a great risk for her career. She did not reveal her condition and obtained a leave for health problems on the 1st of April 1916. On the 17th of July 1916, she gave birth to her daughter, Jeanne, who was recorded with no surname as daughter of unnamed father and mother. She was officially an orphan and she received her mother's surname when formally adopted in 1924. After one month, Pascal returned to Clermont, but she soon arranged a temporary transfer to a section of the Charenton Asylum on the outskirts of Paris. Here, she fostered a daughter with the help of a friend, John Stryker, and the chairman, Mengi. In 1923, after being appointed chief physician at chalon sur marne she established one of the first institutions, medico pedagogiques to give education and medical assistance to children under 16 years of age. In 1928, 
Constance Pascal was diagnosed with breast cancer and she underwent a mastectomy, but she was not free from recurrence from then on. She died of cancer on the 21st of December 1937 at Maison Blanche with medical attendance and her daughter being present. She had asked for no commemoration in the psychiatric press. In all of her life, she maintained a strong separation between professional and private worlds. To achieve her professional goals required exceptional inner strength and courage. These are the stories of seven women born in the 19th century who worked hard to become scientists and published pioneering works in their fields. These women have been largely forgotten and this is a journey in time and space to meet and remember them. It's time to get in. The train is ready to start another journey.